What is good? We're back, and we got a little quick ADP episode for you. Got the uh, make sure to subscribe, like, comment below. Got my guy Jay Wayne over here. Uh, just gonna review this month's ADP real quick with y'all. Uh, see who the movers and shakers were. I don't want to spend too much time in the intro here. You ready to get it rolling? Always. Baby. All Let's right. Let's do it. Let's do it. So. We got Josh Allen. We're doing Superflex uh, ADP from DLF. That's what we're going over. They use a uh, five or six mock uh, average and, and kind of put it together. This is not tight end premium, although that's what we would be playing. Although, you know, sometimes in these ranks, it almost looks like it may be. Um, so we're just going to kind of go through here, see who jumped up, see who stayed the same, what we like, what we don't like. Um, try to keep it short and sweet. So without further ado... Uh, we got Josh Allen at number one, Herbert number two, Patrick Mahomes number three, Burrow number four, Lamar Jackson number five, uh, JT six, Kyler Murray seven, Dak Prescott eight, Jamar Chase nine, Jefferson ten, uh, Kyle Pitts eleven, and Deshaun Watson uh, rounding out twelve. So uh, not too many real big surprises or real jumps. I mean, Joe Burrow jumped up a, a little bit, but it just seems got like to. we're just kind of... Move know, them up, fluctuating around here. Um, I, I would like to take Kyler instead of Joe Burrow, but at, at this really? point, because of ah. Kyler not being able to finish as strongly as he starts and, and always have be a little nicked up. Question marks. Um, you know, I baseball I, and yeah, commitment not, to the team and none contract. Of that's, none of that's real. He just wants a contract. Um, Kyler Murray Give when when Burrow when all day. when healthy and is is pretty much right up there with Herbert and Allen and Mahomes uh fantasy wise um with the legs and with what he can do it's just when he does get that injury he doesn't ever seem to quite get back to where he was and when and that just hasn't not happened in the last 2 years uh so I would I would I can't do it right this minute but um I could I could be down with with Kyler over Joe um but other than that, you know, mostly mostly okay with with this. For me, it's just the way that Joe Burrow carries himself versus Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray seems like a little petty, selfish. Like he just seems like it just this just doesn't seem doesn't seem great. Like yeah, when he's on the field and doing it, he's doing it well. But yeah. it's just the mentality and the way he carries himself. I just man, all day Burrow. I, I don't know. I, you don't feel that way. You don't get at all I, concerned about his, his mentality. No, I mean, I don't. I don't necessarily love it from a from from a standpoint of if that was my actual quarterback for the team that I liked. Uh, but fantasy wise, I mean, when Kyler Murray's right and humming, I mean, there's not too many other quarterbacks you'd rather have. Joe Burrow is is a good is a very good player, um, but uh, he also will put himself in harm's way for the betterment of the team. Hold the ball too long, move out of the pocket, get that big hit taken on him. We've already seen him lose some time, um, and really at the end of the day, was was pretty good down the stretch for you, but was you know a, a fairly average fantasy quarterback there for parts of the season. So coming back um, off an ATL tear, sure, but. Sure, but you know, I, I don't right. I don't hate I don't hate Joe Burrow. I'm just saying that when when I mean, even Lamar, even when Lamar's humming and right, um, you know, I, I might I might like those two guys over him. But I'm fine with 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 Burrow being uh, where he is right now, because those guys do have some sort of question marks that we need to see uh, be fulfilled throughout a full season again. Um, so, but so JT, I could I could I could maybe take maybe take him over Burrow as well. Woo. Um, See, so that, that leads into the question I was about to ask. Like, I almost feel like I'd rather be in the top six of a startup for Superflex so that I can get a quarterback. Because, like, if you pick in the second half, you're going to have like to take to be a couple in the stabs. Top, I'd like to be in the top three. Other than that, I'm all right with really anywhere else. Like, the top three is nice to know. You got Allen, Herbert, Mahomes. Um, right. And then I'm, I'm down with Burrow, Jackson, Kyler, Right. Back maybe at the end, uh, but you know, and then there's there's other quarterbacks that I like kind of throughout. So, you know, no, I'm, I'm, for me, I don't feel I I feel great at the at the one two three spot, sure. Um, but I got to get one of those top six quarterbacks because if you're picking in the second half, you're taking you're, you're pretty much reaching for a quarterback, and then when that second round comes around, it, you have uh, to reach again if you want to start with two quarterbacks, which is kind of how I like to play it. 
Yeah. Because when you get into that third round, it's even more dicey. It's like almost not even worth taking a quarterback at that point. It depends on on who the draft is and and you know what service and platform you're playing on and you know how how their ADP is laid out and how that draft board is in front of you. Like we do plenty of drafts on sleeper and you know the the data that we come up with is you know a good probably not too much different than that top you know seven eight quarterbacks but then after that like at least the rounds that they're drafted in and spaces that they're drafted in seem to uh drop back a bit on the quarterbacks from what you know we're about to see here in a minute um for the rest of this draft you know uh Dak I'd probably draft I'd, I'd, I'd drop Dak down below Chase and Jefferson. I take Jefferson over Chase. Um, I'm a, I'm a little less excited about Dak, but I think that's just because you know you you, you saw the, you know the Cowboys just be kind of average last year and and Dak struggle at times. Um, but you know he had a pretty serious injury as well, so you know they're they're looking to get him a little more mobile again and maybe you know. You don't have Amari Cooper, but you you know they they do a good job of keeping some weapons around him, and we'll see where that offensive line stands. It seems to be a little bit of a question mark right now, but I would take some of those skill positions over him. But you know, this is a very minute things uh, for me. And then Kyle Pitts at eleven, tight end premium for sure all day. Um, Which you're you're fine with that? I saw a tweet where it was like, how much farther can he go up? He can't go up any further. He's peaked at value, and it's like in tight end premium, he could be a top three startup pick. I mean, that's like right? I mean, what is that? have to do with anything though like so you're upset that he's peaked in value like okay I, mean, I, I like, guess i get that like, no, i don't get that so uh, you, so you don't want josh allen and herbert like <laughs> well, what, what, are we talk, what are we talking about they here like, that's that's like you know that's a that's a little bit silly yeah okay i might have the best tight end for the next 10 years hopefully okay like i'm not upset about that um deshaun watson was a little surprising i thought maybe that he you know he's been uh 12 all the news 11 man. 10 and 12 here over the last kind of three months of ADP that we've been doing and tracking here, um, and maybe next month will be the month that he drops back a little bit. We, we we've been you doing think. them ourselves, and um, he's been pretty consistently on the turn. Um, and you know, sometimes falling to the second, but right, we, right there with the beginning probably been of the a little second. bit more bullish on him in the past, and and this last mock that we just put out a little while ago, um, and we'll be talking some more mocks here in the in the coming days. So be sure to subscribe. Um, you know, it seems more and more likely that a full year may be uh, imminent. And the you know, NFL ma- has almost makes me, pigeonholed themselves into giving him a year. Makes me probably want to drop him closer to the end of the second round to feel fine with with you know you're gonna give losing a, a year. year. But it, but it's it's not. He's still relatively young, and I don't right. think the fact that he didn't play football for the last X mm-hmm. amount of years is going to affect anything. Like from all it's accounts, nothing. like he looks absolutely awesome on the football field the last time we actually saw him on the football field was probably the worst team he had and he had the best season uh statistically that he had ever had not wins and losses but uh passing of the football and and whatnot was was all really strong um so you know that that part doesn't worry I mean chase uh missed the entire year and people were upset about that and he came back and, and let the league on fire in the preseason um, and, and now he's murder. dynasty wide receiver one or two for uh most people so chase or jefferson jefferson Quick, quick answer. Oh, let me get Chase. Yeah, Chase. I mean, Jefferson's just doing doing something ridiculous right now, and and I don't, you know, I don't see that really changing. Chase is ridiculous too, and he's got his boy. He's not been doing what Jefferson's been doing on a, on a week to week basis, and like there's there's a lot of, um, you know, when you look at Chase, if you're gonna break it, there's, you know, a lot of things that could be due for regression from what he did last year from a standpoint of yak. Yeah, caught balls and balls that were turned into touchdowns. And I know he's that kind of a player, so you know, it may not happen, but there's seems like Jefferson seems I've like seen it now a couple of times. Too. Kirk's Kirk's just fine. Um New I don't know how much more progression we're gonna get um because of what's around him. Um but Joey you know, B, baby. They'll be just fine. So um moving on to the second round here um not nothing crazy in the first round really joe burrow was probably the biggest mover but that just was seemed like a, a weird draft on cycle on the last where maybe two or three drafters uh pushed him down a little bit for some reason uh so then russell wilson um coming in at 13 Najee at 14 jalen at fifth jalen hurts at 15 uh cd lamb at 16 uh 
Trevor Lawrence at 17, DeAndre Smith at, or Swift at 18, Christian McCaffrey at 19, Stafford at 20, Cooper Cup at 21, Trey Lance at 22, Javante Williams at 23, and to round out the second round, Brees Hall. Bring him up. Which, to your point about the numbers, these ADPs, like shout out to Ryan McDowell who, and, and, and DLF who puts this together, but you pretty much just have to like be on Twitter at the right time to get into one of these drafts to affect this ADP. Yeah. So you never know well, who the, it is or to what To a point doing. of what I was kind of saying earlier, like depending on what the services that you're drafting on and the order that they have these guys in, like, you right. know, can absolutely affect how the layman drafts or the average person drafts a team. Even me sometimes, if, especially if you're mocking and you don't scroll that extra half a page sometimes and, and you know, your head's maybe not quite 100% in the game like it might be on a big startup. Um, you know, it, you certainly could miss you a take player. who's at the top because um, that's what they're suggesting. It's like, oh, the top of this. Maybe list. not necessarily at the top, but you, maybe you Towards thumbed. The top. Maybe you thumbed, uh, you know, a page, and he was three more down or halfway down on the next uh, page that you'd have to thumb. Uh, so you know that I think that can definitely lead to the ADP some of the changes here of your platform. Absolutely, you need to know what that is. That's what you need to be going off of, mm -hmm. and that's the value that you draft off of. Almost, just like I don't have to take this guy because he's not as high on this platform's ADP. That's a huge part of making your draft picks is knowing what players are presented in front of the opponent's eyes first. Yeah. So Russell being right there in the second round, that's I think that's pretty par for the course. Yeah, um, even though then, he's thirty three, that's just I I still feel good. We're in a three year window here in Dynasty. He's going to be cooking for the next three years. Yeah, we, Got and, weapons and probably beyond. Right, um, right. As long as he wants to, probably. We've seen you know typically it's it's Harris, uh, Swift, uh, McCaffrey kind of. Off the board here next in a lot of our drafts. Javante sometimes mixed in there. Who do you want CDs out of all those guys? Kind of in there. I mean, uh, it probably changes daily, but I, I, I think I'm mostly on the Swift side of things, followed closely by Najee and then CMC. But I'm not. I'm not turning down those CMC points. Um, but uh, we just did a draft where it was CMC or Lamb for me, and and I, I ended up going Lamb, and that was. But that was a kind of a tough decision i think most people out there would be like yeah you made the right decision but in season if christian mccaffrey's playing for the next three seasons uh because he unfortunately got injured these last two seasons the same reason why i'm not taking christian mccat or not taking kyler and uh, over joe burrow is the same reason that you know Ky christian mccaffrey isn't the consensus number one running back uh right now because he's, he's been banged up the last two seasons uh, people are a little scared of him but when he's out there he's, he's the number one point getter uh pretty much regardless uh so um down down kind of with any of those guys you're, you're excited to get them on that turn there um so and then jalen hurts kind of mixing in right there at, at 15 you know I, I i probably can't do that for me i i, I get it i understand the fantasy points that he's going to score and and but I, I don't think that he'll necessarily be you know looking for a job next year and not being able to get one if the Eagles don't want him for some reason because they desire to do something different uh, with their offense. Um, you know, I think he'll be – somebody else will line up to say, hey, we'll we'll play this uh, style of Hurts yeah, kind you, of football here and, and he'll be it, just fine. The Eagles set themselves up to play this perfectly. They have a lot of – they have several first-round draft picks next year. If they're not any they good, want, yeah. they can – they could trade up and get somebody that they want. They have enough ammunition to do whatever they want. And then a, a team would probably buy Jalen Hurts and, and, and bridge him if they had to or give him a legitimate shot. Give so he's not going to be dead what, next yeah, year yeah. at all. But I can't take him over the other quarterbacks on this list, like Trevor, Lance, Matthew Stafford. I got to get all those guys before I take Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I, mean, I, I feel the, I feel much better about him in the third round. It's, than a, real, I do in it's, the second. it's a high probability that he's going to outscore you know a lot sure. of those guys. Redraft, sure. redraft. Wise, Let's go there all and, day. And, and yeah. You know, I, I just I, I'm probably not pulling the trigger quite that early. It's just like you know, redraft, kind of, you man. About it. Let's fucking go. I'll draft. Talked him about him. it for a minute there, like you know, you got on this turn here, and and you might be reaching for quarterbacks, and and that's where he is there, and he might slide two or three spots down in most of the mocks that we do, but he typically goes somewhere in that mid second, late second. Uh, somebody usually scoops him up, um, but it's almost never me. Uh, but so C D yeah. Lamb goes next um, after Jalen, and I'm. 
100 percent okay with that then t law goes and now we're seeing you know these quarterbacks in the mocks we're doing I, i'm seeing t law a little closer to the end of the second mid kind of early third um i got him at a at three five in a mock we just did Woo. um that's that was great value that was strong value i was excited about that um, this, and then this this adp doesn't indicate the discount that Trevor Lawrence is right now. I feel like a fair amount of people are out on Trevor Lawrence because he didn't light up the world. We had Mason on, and he read off some stat about yards per attempt and how if you're below this threshold or your rookie year, you'll never be good. So he's basically out. He's got his formula dialed in, and if you don't meet yeah. these marks, then then he's out, and that's fine. You, you play in the percentages. You want to do that, I get it. But, like, man, I've been going back and watching Trevor Lawrence games – Yes, he's made a lot of bad throws, but he's also made a lot of spectacular yeah, throws. Of and he's also he's he led the league in drops. Like I want to do a video about how Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne right now are by low trade candidates because just the narrative around them, the narrative around the team, like fucking er like you watch like the first five games of the season, different announcers calling the games in the beginning of the game are talking about how Trevor Lawrence's demeanor and his attitude and, and just the way he carries himself are so much more positive and better than the head coach. Right. Like he's dealing with the adversity so much better than the goddamn head coach. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, uh, any, any time that, that I don't, that I'm in the back half of that second and I don't get Russell, um, or the back half of the first, and I don't get Russell. I'm usually looking at at T Law or Lance, maybe even a little earlier. It seems like Lance goes off the board. If you want to take um, Lance, you, Lance know, you know, I can't be mad at that. But a I, good bit, but you probably should with the rush because they're both gonna have. They're both not going anywhere the following year. Whatever they do this year, they're still getting another shot. Yeah. They're on that rookie contract, high picks. That you you you've got you know a a, a better uh, quarterback. Uh, head, friendly head coach you've got surrounded him with with more talent you can argue about the overpay and i'm not here to argue about that i don't really care um but the, it's the, what's surrounding him right now is is you know leaps and bounds better than what it was obviously they don't Upgrade necessarily line. have the elite elite pieces but i mean they have good pieces kind of all around um and and trevor is is a good player and i think i think this he is going to be the just throws. fine and 17 the here legs. though does seem rich and for the most part of, that's where you have to take um, him in kind of what i've what i've seen none uh, almost none of the mocks that we've done he has gone that high if you want two um, quarterbacks with your first two picks that's where you got to take him like you got to so take him somewhere i'm thinking i'm saying that that's a little more elevated than what i've currently seen agree um so and where the general um, public probably is and then here comes DeAndre Swift. Would you talk about that? There goes um, Christian McCaffrey and then uh, Stafford. These guys are all floating right around within one or two uh, points of uh, or numbers of where their ADP has been. Um, you got to feel good about, you know, if you need a quarterback, end of the second round, Stafford, I'm definitely Love down it. with that. All day. Um, Cooper Cups went from 26 to 14, back to 21. So decent amount of fluctuation. Um in in cooper cup there um i definitely cooper. definitely don't want him anywhere in that 14 range um and if we if, if we got to the end of the second you know i could i could start smelling a little cup um, i'm fine anywhere in that second round you want to take him you want to take him over cd lamb as a third wide receiver uh, off the board i'm i'm fine with that mm -mm. Um, you're gonna get we're working in a three-year window here he got extension He's getting. He seems to be getting better, like a fine wine. I mean, he's gonna score as many points or more than all these wide running backs. So it, is he? I mean, he, he scored like five more points a game than every running back. How many so times even you if see he, that repeat? Even if he digresses to seventy five percent of that, it's still one of the top running back scores in the league. So let him regress. Oh, he's gonna he's regress. still gonna be fine. He'll be good. Still He'll be, be good. fucking awesome. And then he'll be thirty. Um, so Trey Lance is basically he was 15, 23, 22. Um, he's he's going a lot earlier than than what I would have suspected coming into this off season, but it's basically Super stayed flex. stayed pretty steady. And gotta you get know, that running I'm, quarterback. I'm, I guess I'm mostly down with it. Javante's near the end of this round now, and then you got Brees Hall, um, which I would I think I might take Brees over Javante. So. Um, down with that and i could you know i could bump 
I could bump Brees up a spot or two really in there and, and be fine with it. I, um, I, I could still go Javante over Brees just because of that offense and the quarterback situation. I know the Jets have a lot going for them with the coordinator and the upgrades they've made, but, man, it's hard to buy into the Jets. I know I love taking Brees Hall, and I, I, you need a running back at the end of the second round all day. I'll take him. There's a skill position thing to buy into on the Jets. It's Brees Hall. Um, True. You know, it's not the same as buying into those receivers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, at that point, I'm probably going to pass. Um, We're in the third round here. Early, for beginning of the third, um, but he stayed pretty consistent. Not a whole lot of great movement we've seen so far. Barkley, um, from what I've been seeing, this is higher than mm-hmm. uh, where, where he's gone. But People I mean, have not been wanting to take him in the mocks we've been he's in. He's probably been one of the biggest uh, attempted buys for me all off season. I like what's about to, I think, take place there in, in New York for Saquon. I think we're about to have a, a reemergence there. Um, and they didn't and, and really, really remind you of how, how great he is. Give him any great backups. Just, they're no. pretty much telling you they're going to lean on him. And that you, all you hear is the receiving, him working around yeah. the formation. and more Get back to that 90 reception Saquon game. from right. rookie season. It wouldn't um, take very much at all for him to vault up. So then Justin Fields goes off the board. Again, as you're going to hear me say this multiple times as we get through these quarterbacks, they're all elevated from what I've been seeing in startups that we've been doing. Uh, uh, with, Over on Patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. Um, so Justin Fields is usually a quarterback who, if I'm in the third or fourth round um, and don't have a quarterback or need a second quarterback that I'll start looking at, and this is – you know, probably a bit higher in the third when uh, he's usually towards the end of the third, early fourth, where, where we'll, from what I've been seeing. Um, and then there's Devontae Adams. He kind of he, he dropped down four spots. Um, Fields went up, you know, a decent amount of spots there. Uh, so good for him. Uh, Devontae goes down a couple of spots. And I think if you're if you're going to be down, if you're in, interested in, in Cooper Cup, I guess you got to be, you know, almost equally as interested in Devontae Adams, in, in my opinion. Um, and then Tua's here, which, uh, you know, I haven't seen Tua go quite that high anywhere. He's been fourth round or below, typically fifth round. Um, we just did one, and you took him in the fourth round, but you were also quarterback less. Um, and he I didn't usually, feel great he usually about floats it, but... around for another round or two in the ones that we've been doing. Um, did I so take him over Derek Carr? You did. Yeah, that was a tough decision. I didn't I, – I was – Usually in these mocks or any any super flex, I want two quarterbacks in the first three rounds. But it, it starts to really fall off. And if you don't get two good ones, and if you're not in the right spot and it doesn't fall right, you end up reaching. And, and it's like, do I reach or do I set myself back a quarterback? And I just, you know, mocks sometimes you just play a different style than what you normally would to see how it plays out, see how you feel, test the waters. And I got to say I'm feeling much – I'm feeling better about Tua, like – it's just as this off season goes on, I'm feeling more, more and more better about Tua. I'd rather have him over Fields. What, what, what do you say about that? Um, that's a coin flip. I, I think I think I like the surroundings, of course, way better than what's going on the with, offensive with, scheme with Tua and, and the scheme. So, um, I would I'd, I'd probably actually take Carr over both, both of them. Of them? Um, but uh, you know it's hard. It's hard to turn down the upside of Justin Fields, but then you have the Bears' quarterback uh, record, and and doesn't make you feel super great. I mean, Tua, but good good for Tua, thirty five, thirty three, and twenty nine this month. So uh, consistently on the rise for for Tua. Those, those are the ADPs over Willow. the last three months, right? Um, AJ Brown, one of the hardest guys for me to put my finger on. But hey, if we're if we're gonna get into this later third round here. Um, and AJ Brown's going to hang around, you know, I don't necessarily love it for, uh, AJ Brown personally, but it's, it's great for Jalen hurts. Um, and, and, you know, really, I don't know how different the situation is from where he left to where he is, uh, currently. So it, it's more to me about that. And that's a fair point. Cause you know, very run heavy offense that he just left coming to a, a an offense that was run heavy in the second half of the season that saw a lot of success doing that and they've said that that's how they're going to continue to go thing make things go but the rickety knees that you always want yeah, to point to wide the, receiver one overall dynasty upside that's really what he gives you in a hole so if you're going to tell me third round i'm in but, 
but those rickety knees, and then, and then why wouldn't Tennessee just pay him? Why would they move him? What do they know that we don't? They're concerned about the injury, and that's why they shipped him off for a first-round pick. That's it. And they took Traylon, who's coming in with his I mean, own. they just re- reset for, you know, hey, we're not going to pay this guy. So everyone just plays things differently, man. I mean, But that, that that gives me a little bit of pause, the fact that they didn't want to pay him, that they would ship him out for his, a first when he has number one wide receiver overall potential. Not happy, uh, didn't want to pay him. They they moved him, got some got some equity back, and now they got a receiver who's they they probably believe in that building is probably not all that different from AJ Brown. So I mean, you know, you, you can <sighs> look into it how, however you would Lawn, though, you, you would know? like. I mean, but you know, uh, nobody. I just don't see myself pulling the trigger on AJ Brown. I, I pff, give me at thirty one for sure. I'll, I'll pull that trigger. Um, depending on how the team build is, because you, you, you're always looking for things. Yeah, I'll take him over Debo. Um, so Debo's next on the list at 31. Jalen though, um, um, that'd be a Jalen's. That'd be a coin flip. Um, Mark Andrews goes next at 32. Cam Akers at 33. That's biggest seems, jump so far. Yeah, 54 up to 33. Spots. That's wild. 21. I haven't seen that. Uh uh-uh. Any and it reflected in any of our personal mocks um, mm-hmm. which eventually we'll have time and effort to be able to give you our own adp on these um, but right now we're using dlfs and 33 to 54 to 33 that is absolutely the biggest jump and look if cam makers is right and and they're, they're going to run cam makers like like we think that could have been possible with cam makers then this is absolutely warranted i haven't seen it He's been kind of a guy I've been gun shy on since the jump and was probably still am pretty gun shy on um, after coming back from all that. We didn't we, we saw him have a ridiculous comeback and then not be uber effective uh, in the playoffs. So, you know, man, but, he but came hey, back you, way too soon. From you're giving him injury. you're giving him, you know, even more time to get right. And he gets back on the field. That could be a steal. Uh, I've been seeing him in the fifth round uh, a lot. And, and that would be an absolute steal if he comes in and pays off. Uh, so that's that's pretty good. Derek Carr at 34 and Kirk Cousins at 35. Like, I'm I'm getting Kirk Cousins in the seventh round in a lot of these drafts that we're doing. Yeah. So, again, I, I just keep Kirk seeing these quarterbacks being uh, really pushed up. Derek Carr has typically been in the fifth round uh, for us, late fourth, fifth. Um, so uh, that's pretty high. And, and Kirk – or. Uh, Carr went 50, 39, and 34 this month uh, for ADP. And Kirk, 54, 48, and 35. So not uh, all that different from uh, the Cam Akers bump, which none of that that doesn't make any – at least the Cam Akers thing is like, hey, okay, we kind of forgot about Dre. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, you know, we're coming back. He looks good, yada, yada, yada. He's a young guy running back. You need a running back. Um, and, and these guys who are down below here, the kind of in the older running back crew. Uh, so I get that one, but for Kirk to really jump up that high, it's not like they traded for DK Metcalf or something. And so, even if you know, they, even if they did, nobody likes Kirk cousins. All he does is put up, I love him as my QB yeah. two, uh, in, and, and I'm fine with that. Now, like he, I love him as perennially QB two if I have an elite QB perennially one. disrespected and just, is uh, I have no problem starting him week in week out. Uh, he, his statistical numbers are are pretty strong uh, fantasy wise, and I think he'll be just fine for for a while. Um, and we'll see what Kevin O'Connell can bring. Uh, if he could to get that, that contract there, so. extension and stay there, that would be icing on the cake. But sure. he'll go somewhere. He, he's going to be a quarterback in the NFL for the next several years. He's done. He's done work, so he doesn't yeah. need to be if he doesn't want to be. Right. Um, so then Jalen Waddle comes in here, and I like Jalen Waddle a good bit than you know uh, more than probably your average bear. Um, and that third round, that end of the third round, um, I'm definitely down uh, with that value. Uh, for sure. Um, Are you not second round Jalen Waddle fan? And and no, uh, I'd probably let him ride uh, because I know that I don't have to. Um, in 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 most cases, there's not a whole lot of people who are screaming on that. Uh, I'd be trying to trade for Jalen Waddle, and you know, I I like if I've, if a lot of the times if I'm on that uh, two ten kind of pick, two nine kind of pick, I'll let him slide through that two ten spot, and then maybe try to pick him up at the three four three five spot. Um, because I, I I do believe that he's a perfect fit for what's going on there, and I think Tua can facilitate enough uh, to support uh, two wide receivers for sure. 
I mean, he's uh, just so young and showed so much that we're playing dynasty. And yeah, I, I love what I these saw. These situations from him. can change. It's just like get just get the talent. The match guy made you in know heaven for the system. This is so good that that we're, so is that we're perceiving right. But there's two awesome guys for that system, man. I mean, I think you know it's it, it's sometimes, but like you could you could definitely like outsmart yourself into not taking Jalen because of Tyreek and because of Tua and because of the Dolphins. It's just like. You know what you saw in that rookie season? And he, he fucking murked. He fucking crushed it. He was so good. He's so good. He was good in college when he had the opportunity when he was healthy. Like, he was an outlier because the metrics didn't line up because it just didn't line up for him. But when you saw him play, if you watched the goddamn games, he he crushed. And he's he's a game breaker and can do so many things. So just just don't outsmart yourself with Jalen Waddle. Yeah. Just take Jalen Waddle. Yeah, and, and it's dynasty. You know, maybe it doesn't work out year one. Maybe, maybe he does regress. Maybe it's not the greatest. But it's st- shit can change so quickly. Yeah. Like he could get traded. Tyreek could quit. Tyreek could get traded. Uh, like they Tua could get could, a different quarterback. Like Tua could be Drew Brees. And Tua could fucking, you're fucking excited. Right. So. Like there's so many things that could happen. Just bank on the talent. Just bank on the talent. Yeah, so Mac Jones again, and I'm not going to say it anymore, but that's way higher than than I've seen him go in any of our mocks. Uh, that's uh, 43 to 37 jump on Mac Jones, and they added uh, Devonte Parker and Tyquan Thornton. Uh, so, and and right now it seems like like the thing that scares me the most about that offense is it seems like it could be a little rudderless as far as McDaniel's been the stalwart there for so long. Like who's who's coming in and 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 taking that. Uh, task over to uh direct that offense in the in the direction that we we need to see it go whereas the patriots kind of have you know sort of are in flux a little bit and so uh, i like what i saw from mac jones at times last year but i just i don't really know exactly what's going to take place over there it's got to be year. a little bit alarming that there isn't a single offensive coordinator on the staff <laughs> like <laughs> but t higgins Billy. coming in next <laughs> Is a strong uh, value there at 38. He jumped. He dumped from 34 to 38. So down a little bit on T. You're gonna give me T in the third. I like. I, I you know I like that. Um, Stefan Diggs 39. So he's been 48, 35, 39. So he's been kind of floating all around. I have um, not taken Stefan Diggs in any of these mocks. I, just I mean, I never... almost feel like you know. I mean, he's if you if you if you're down with Cup and you're down with Adams. I mean. Diggs isn't that far off of those guys from maybe a little younger. Yeah, maybe not he is, not much. Like but a year. Yeah. So I mean, this is probably a pretty good deal on Diggs for if you're gonna say, hey, I'm playing this two three years. Um, you know, I agree. I probably haven't been really looking at him, but maybe that's that's a good sign to say, hey, maybe you should go look at Diggs and see if anybody's looking to unload him for you know a reasonable price throughout you your rookie draft because you're feeling like you're ready to to win he regressed from two years ago where he was like the wide receiver two or three Mm -hmm. to back to like 12 or 13 or something i'm just pulling these numbers out of my head but he was one of the best two years ago and then was still really good last year just wasn't the best right and that recency bias getting older so let me read got a contract extension right let me read through the rest of this round real quick we got dalvin uh eckler Zach Wilson at 42, Mixon at 43, DK at 44, Tyreek at 45, Tommy at 46, Tommy. Uh, Chubb at 47, DJ Moore at 48, ETN, or 48 would be the round. So, I really like parts of this round, and I really dislike parts of this round. Um, I, I dislike the, the, the second part of this first half, like Dalvin Cook, Austin Eckler, Zach Wilson. No way. I yeah, g- I mean, I guess, I guess we're getting into the fourth year. We're in the so, fourth. So, you know. uh, Eckler doesn't usually last till the fourth, right? Um, No. Usually, I feel like he's been a pretty consistent third rounder in the mocks that we've been doing. And no um, chance I'm taking Zach Wilson. I just can't see myself well, I mean, taking j- just, Zach Wilson. Just, again, I've said it to death here. Like, Mac Jones was 6'9", in this last one we just did. Um Tom Brady was seven eight in the last one we just did, and Zach Wilson was seven ten. Uh, so that's a good it's a good bit difference of kind of what we've been seeing versus what you're seeing here. When I think I would assume that what we've been seeing seems a little more when I'm in the draft. That's when they're starting to come onto my radar. I mean, I'm not saying uh, you know I'm 
the most right ever. Uh, but there's a zero percent chance I'm taking most of these quarterbacks where they just ADP just was. I like this DK Metcalf. I love that Joe Mixon uh, ADP right there. Sure. Let me. You know, Tyreek too. I could have not. That could be my first running back right there, and I, I like that. Uh, I like that Joe Mixon. Um, you know, Dalvin Cook could honestly be the best running back in the league this year again. You know, and and, and so could Eckler. Uh, Nobody seems there's there's nothing on the Dalvin Cook off the field stuff, which I guess is suspended, which I guess is good. If no news is good news, would I feel like it could fly back up all of a sudden? But I don't really know what's what's taking place there. So that's a, that's a little red flag. And then the fact that he is a little older um, and has you know had some the little injuries throughout seasons along with Eckler uh, as well. Um, Joe Mixon over both those guys all day. Only one year left on that Eckler deal uh, for any playing for peanuts. So. Be interesting to see uh, kind of what happens there. And then DK at 44, I think that's great value. Tyreek at 45, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Tommy at 46, no, no way. way. Uh, Nick Chubb is is probably a guy. He's he's kind of in that D, in that um, A.J. Brown kind of realm for me where I really, really like the player. I just, you know. Uh, if you have him, you don't trade him. If you don't have him, you don't have him. Right. You're not going to get I'm, him. And I'm, I've almost never, like, I've, I've Stefan Diggs, rather, sorry. I almost am never looking at him in these mocks that we're doing, which, you know. I mean, I see You'd him. like to say without. I see him. Right. Well, I don't even see him. Like, that's kind of like I don't see Diggs or Chubb, really, like because I'm never really looking at him. So I, I see think Chubb. I see Chubb. Probably telling you that there's like, a door open for some value if you're ready to win. But if you have and Chubb, you're not trading him. I, well, I mean, we traded him. Um, or rebuilding. Well, I mean, there lots of people are rebuilding. Half your league's always rebuilding because yeah. nobody wants to win. You shouldn't be rebuilding. Um, we but, took over an orphan. But, you know, I, I, I would be – I'm down. If somebody's going to give me proper value on Chubb, I would trade him. Um, but What's proper value? I, I don't know. That's like – You pro- you probably can't get you're a not, 23 you're not, you're not first. Getting, you're probably not getting exactly what you need. But I, I would like to think that almost without Deshaun, I like Chubb a little bit more, but – you know, nah. then you're like, ah, well, there's there's probably less scoring opportunity, but there's probably yeah. more usage opportunity. Uh, if Jacoby Brissett's your quarterback, then you're probably going to be a pretty run heavy team. Like, regardless, like it's going to be a lot of chub yeah, and that offensive line going to town. You, you need um, someone better than Jacoby Brissett. I mean, I, I mean, maybe so, but I mean, it's it's just Stefanski wants to run it. Stefanski, I, I don't. You, you might not have a choice but to be a super run heavy team, um, which is you know what the talent of Derrick Henry makes him a good player, but the fact that they're willing to just you know hit a motherfucker again and again and again. Well, he gets is, better as the game you know, goes on, and, and there and isn't so, a Kareem Hunt. So can him. so can Chubb. Right, um, but there isn't a Kareem Hunt behind. Right, Derek but Henry. I mean Chubb. Chubb is pretty efficient with his touches and if you're going to give him more touches uh pretty what you know i like i know there's like more to touches talk about to be it had as, in a better offense um maybe not for nick chubb if they, there's no way that they run as much as they would without deshaun watson or you just how, gave him all this guarantee money maybe just let the running game take it he hasn't played in a year yeah i mean i think i think you're gonna i think you're gonna let no you're certain if deshaun <laughs> Deshaun Watson's playing, you're definitely going to see that passing number increase uh, a good bit, I would assume. But you're probably not going to see that this year. So Chubb's probably going to be a nice little diamond in the rough for this season. But that's kind of, you know, a little bit of backwards thinking. But I'm thinking that that his, you know, opportunity share will be. Six 10-yard runs is a touchdown, you know. Yeah. And and, and he's, you know, we like to say it a lot is when when guys – you know, maybe don't catch a bunch of balls and, and don't get his maybe the best pure runner in the uh, in the yeah. league because Chubb's so good and it's not like he can't catch. Uh, yeah, the PPR catch, totals so. don't wow you. There's just not enough catches in there to yeah. to really bolster it up if he doesn't score that touchdown. Uh, so, uh, but DJ Moore rounding out the fourth round that's going to be an auto pick for me. I love that pick. Uh, DJ Moore's done nothing but perform pretty well on in bad situations, and you'd like to think at some point it's going to get better. Um, and, and I really like the player. I really like him. Uh, he was really good with Darnold those first couple of weeks when Darnold was, was good and healthy and, and Darnold is probably, you know, at best CMC firing, firing is probably, you know, a, tw- you know, 20th quarterback or less in the league. So if you're going to tell me I can get, you know, DJ Moore with just somebody who's 
middle of the pack uh, quarterback. I, I'm, I'm loving it. Um, and then ETN starting this next round at 49 uh, is, has been, you know, I know it's no secret. A lot of people are, are in the Travis ETN by low category, but, are they? um, I, yeah, I mean, if you read, read out there, it's, it's, it's a lot of by low Good and then, you. and then a lot of, you know, don't touch him. So it's, it seems like it's pretty split, um, kind of down the middle. I I'm buying, I think the talent All is day. off the charts. I don't really, I could, can't really understand why anybody can watch him and say the talent is not good. I don't really get that. Um, I, I, this, it was too good for too long. You found too many silly things to knock him for. I think, you know, coming in here, I think he could – we, we kind of made a case for it last year. I think he could be, you know, Kamara-esque. Uh, uh, so, I know that's a, you know, high praise. Um, and, and the Jags, which, you know, or offense or is, is probably going to look different and the whole team Definitely gonna is going to look different. different. And J-Rob is not ready. Right, and but but last Snoop year, Snoop Connor is like the only other dude on your roster. Last year, they were running the read option, and Trevor is a threat with his legs, and did have a decent amount of rushing yards and attempts overall in the league. And James Robinson was doing work, which James Robinson is a good back. Yeah, but there were times when he was getting caught because of his lack of athleticism, and if it was Travis Etienne, well, and there's that al- rock, there's also there's also a different dynamic between those the two. Between James Robinson and and Trevor and the giant dynamic that'll be there with ETN and and Trevor, like that's just and, that's and a, Trevor knows ETN trusts him, likes him, wants him to do well. To be He's to be to dump good in the passing game is not going to be hard for ETN to just be that safety valve for him. Um, right. And, so and, he has he offers a little more in the PPR side and electricity. Like there were times when. James Robinson had a, a lot of big runs. Like he he was doing work. He's a very good player. I don't you but know. ETN's not getting. If caught Robinson from was wasn't off coming off an Achilles late in the season, you know, it would give me a little bit more pause to say this will be probably a mixed up situation. But you're probably going to get a chance for ETN to really stake his claim in the role in the offense here. And then I think if if and when things are rolling, it's going to be hard to take ETN off the field. But James Robinson coming back will be a welcome addition to, you know, help ETN out a little bit. Almost nobody has that, you know, even when Kamara was slapping, he is not the guy. Like, not, not, there's always another guy in the fold, typically. Um, so Kamara would, is the next guy on the list here. And I, I for that, um, you know, I, I'm very unsure what we're going to see with the Saints. the Saints. You have Sean Payton exiting quarterbacks kind of up in the air. Jameis is coming off an injury. We don't know what Michael Thomas is doing. We just haven't seen this. He was Sean Payton was the longest tenured coach in the entire league. We, I, and you know, Dennis has been there for a while, uh, but he's a defensive guy. We just don't really exactly know what we're going to get here. There's a potential suspension for Kamara, right? Um, you know, 50, I guess you could start throwing darts. Um, he's probably another guy who, when I'm drafting, necessarily i'm not looking at um kamar jk super hard um jk dobbins etn or kamar etn yeah if Derek i could Henry make that trade on uh it's like Kamara. i'm not, like not looking at those guys Kamara. almost i'm almost not there's i haven't drafted Derek henry in a single one of these or mocks. kamara um, or Kamara, yeah, no, not looking at those guys right now. So, what about like Deontay? I said, if you're, maybe if you're not looking at those guys, maybe there is a little crease in value. Um, Travis Kelsey is 52. We usually only go to 50. We usually throw a couple extra ones here, so this is all bonus uh, kind of stuff. Derrick Henry 51, Kelsey 52, Deontay 53, Tannehill 54. Again, big that's, jump. That's, that's like that's an in, like in our drafts, like he's like a double digit round right guy. Nobody so, wants to take Tannehill. Uh, I've said it ad nauseum here. Uh, the, these quarterbacks are elevated for for me and from what I see. Um, Dobbins at 55, <laughs> Pittman at 56, Pickett at 57, Woof. Uh, <laughs> Evans at fifty eight. Drake I London. Seen Evans go I was ahead I just I wanted to Chris get to Godwin. these to these rookies for the most part, and I really haven't really seen too many of them was when I wanted to stop. But the the fact that uh Pickett is over Drake uh is wild. Yeah, that, that, um, that's that just not never happens. just not happening. Not and in then, any rookie draft ever. I think you just came Kittle down there is is that's great value. Big if time. if Kittle if the if the bottom's falling out of him, you know, you like the Godwin and Terry value all this is nice little value circle here chris godwin's gonna miss a chunk of the season seemingly 
Evans is set to smash again. Always the most disrespected guy available um, and going to be without Godwin there for a minute and with Tommy for at least another year, so you love that. Terry's probably in the best situation he's been with Carson. He's probably sitting out a little bit here, wants a contract, but I made it a point to trade for Terry two years ago in, in a couple of leagues because I just – every time I watched him, I was like, Jesus, that dude is – one F, of the best F1. players on the field, man, all the time. He just has been in a terrible circumstance, much like a DJ Moore. Um, and maybe with a little bit more health issues uh, than DJ Moore, but plays through a lot of it and still puts up numbers. Uh, so Terry is is ready to explode with any sort of a quarterback. Um, and then here comes Aaron Jones, 63. Probably an okay value there at that point. Um, probably going to be a lot of that. That there's the PPR upside with Jones right now is is absolutely yep. through the roof. And I'm pretty sure his contract keeps him there for and another extra year. He went from Aaron, 77 to 63. Aaron Rodgers only up two from May. Two but, from May, but I'm just saying, yeah. like, but that was before the Rodgers signing. So yeah, um, Aaron Rodgers is going to be there probably just two years. Devontae Adams gave us a little glimpse into it. Maybe he's just saying that. Maybe he was just making excuses and maybe pl helping Aaron Rodgers out. Maybe Aaron was like, hey, just tell him I might be here for just one more year because yeah. then that gives me more drama to drum up. Yeah. You know, but maybe he was just – maybe that was a Freudian slip where he was like, you know, I wanted to be more set in my quarterback for more years, you know, which hey. which I don't know that we're all expecting Devontae to go peak past two years, but he signed a big extension. He's yeah. going to – you know, already 29, but it's going to be there through 34 years old Gets or whatever. Gets to play with his homie, so – um, you know, but but he gave us a little glimpse. Aaron Rodgers probably just bank on two more, one more year after this year. Maybe but you get Aaron Ro Aaron Jones for two years in, in the sixth round. It could be an RB, like probably an RB one. That's a swing. If you take that, could be a, a, a helpful league winner there. Yeah, um, Kenny and three stick sixty five, Winston sixty six, quarterback elevated, uh, Gibson sixty seven. A fall from grace uh, from him since. Uh, the B Rob signing and then the McKissick signing, uh, really, he was he was a guy who could have been a second round, maybe fringe first round if McKissick goes bye bye, and now he is uh, way down here in the sixth. At that point, Big I, value. I could see. Let me get him. I could see being interested in him, um, and then here comes Bateman, um, and in a lot of our drafts, uh, I feel like Bateman goes a good bit later than that, uh, seven one, so so not not too different. Um, and then Lenny, Montgomery, Zeke uh, rounded out, and Jacobs is at 73. There's Traylon at 74, Elijah Moore 75. Uh, so, you know, a lot Montgomery of – Montgomery or uh, Antonio Gibson? Um, Shit, give me Monty, baby. Yeah? Yeah. Probably I don't think there's that big of an age difference, really. No, probably not. Monty's going to be 25 at some point in the season. Gibson, 24. Monty's been, been so good. Uh, for your fantasy team, for the most part, um, and I just regardless know. of that Bears team, yeah, that, that's that's a close one. It seems like that's that's good value on Gibson, but it seems like the value is always good on Monty Gibson. But it, everybody hates Monty, and he should probably be a guy who's higher up in general from skill set and Monty points can't wise. Really go up. Gibson's value could still go up. Could potentially go up from from what he can he can be efficient with his touches and yeah. be good and, and uh we've just seen him a little more work in the past and, and stay just stay not not nicked up yeah um, and i think that's kind of what led to the situation that we're in uh right now where rivera doesn't want to be caught without uh, a good running back back there so it is very frustrating that he's not a pass catcher that we think and know and believe that he could be but you know mckissick back in there grabbing that role probably so that's a bummer for Gibson's uh, value has has definitely tanked here, and, and Zeke there, I think that's you know another potential league winner uh, at that at that point there. I know everybody likes big Pollard. jump from me. I know everybody likes Pollard, uh, but you know, oh, you know he's Zeke, Mark's Zeke there. not Zeke Mark. not healthy after week six or whatever it was, and still played and still a high end RB uh, for you. And RB six. Those first couple of weeks of Zeke were awesome. And you know he's he's going to be in there. He's, he's in great shape this off season. Um, so I, I love I love that Zeke buy right there, and and probably even that Josh Jacobs buy at seventy three. Man, like oh, all he, he does is hear that. go out and catch a bunch of balls and and be good at football. So 
I know they didn't sign the, the fifth year extension, so there's no way that he could be good. It's like tells you what the Raiders want to do, right? Like, okay, so he's he's just not good anymore, and there's it just does that that shit does not make any sense to me. Like, nobody's signing first year running backs anymore, so why would anybody or nobody's drafting round one running backs anymore? So why would we be signing fifth year extensions on those guys? Like, unless it's just so cheap that which is not the case um, with the, with the fifth year, um, so. I don't really like I don't even know who the hell the I guess Najee could be the next guy to get a fifth year extension. But there's not even like who else is even going to get that? Like they're not drafting running backs in the first round anymore. So that's even not even going to be a fucking thing. Like so JT's not getting one like he wasn't a first rounder. Like nah, I e guess E.T. E could potentially get one. But it's gliding in I just whatever, man. Yeah. Like, Josh Jacobs is better than Samir White. I can tell you that. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So definitely anyhow, better all around. Uh, anyway, appreciate y'all tuning in. Went a little long there. I thought we were going to get in short and sweet, but ended up chit chatting for a little ah, bit. I so just can't shut the fuck up. A little ADP review uh, for your pleasure and uh, be sure to tune in, subscribe, uh, like five star on the podcast. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Go to revelrybrewingco.com. Get the t-shirt. I got nothing else. You said it all. Oh. I just wanted to play the music for a little bit longer. All right. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. Peace. <laughs>